Hi, everybody. It is uh, the second day of May. I wanted to get this posted yesterday, but here we are on the second day of May, my summer outlook, which is basically entirely focused on the number of 90 degree or hotter days that I expect in Portland. Now, we put this outlook together the first of May because although the earliest 90 degree temperature in the record book at PDX is April 30th, and the latest is October 5th, generally the 90 degree heat season of possibility is May, June, July, August, and September, if that makes sense, okay? So um, here we go, coming to you from uh, downtown Portland, and the question is, how many 90 degree days this time around Portland weather, hot or not, we are in a neutral inso cycle. The inso cycle is, the, are we neutral? Are we La Nina? Are we El Nino? Last summer, a summer that hit 90 or better 28 times, went into the books as a hot summer, uh, was neutral cycle. And we're in a neutral cycle again this time around. So uh, let me, well, first off, here's the Momentous Wealth podcast, a reminder, they sponsor my YouTube videos. We thank them. You can listen on Apple Podcasts. You can listen on Spotify. These financial topic podcasts um, for investment are brought to you by local firm Momentous Wealth Management License in Oregon and in Washington. Okay, so let's get right to the answer to the question. And the answer is possible 90 degree days. 22 to 31 is my range, meaning I, I firmly believe we'll have at least 22 days this summer season of hitting 90 or better. And I wouldn't be shocked if we get up closer to 30 or 31. 31 is the record that was set back in 2018. So what about 100 degree days? You know, when I came here as a forecaster in 1999, it was not unusual that you would go a few summers in a row without hitting 100. But now it seems like we assume that we're going to hit 100 at least once or twice. And the most we've ever done that any summer season is five. So again, we'll assume we're going to hit 100 degrees. So basically, this tells you nothing new. It says the last few summers have been hot. I expect this summer to be hot as well. And a reminder, we're coming off of what went into the record books as the second warmest April all time when you look at the mean temperature for PDX. Okay. So let's start with what I'm looking at and how I look at it. So the, the INSO cycle, again, La Nina, El Nino, or neutral. I base my winter outlook very heavily on getting these phases correct. All right. So if you go back just to the year 2000, why only 2000? Because since the year 2000, it is undeniable. Our summers are doing this. They're on a projection of just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So since 2000, the La Nina seasons that we've had during the summer have produced an average number of 90 degree days of 23. El Nino summers since 2000 have an average of 90 degree days or more of 26. Neutral, which is what we were in last year, what we'll be in this summer, averages 28. And again, 28 is actually the number that we had last summer. So with this said, though, I, I want to be clear that even though I've been looking at this, from what I found, I'm convinced that there is weak to no confidence in the signaling at all, meaning I don't believe it overly matters if we're in La Nina, El Nino, or neutral. I suppose if we are to enter into one of the coming seasons, a really strong La Nina during the summer, or a really strong El Nino during the summer, then maybe that could have some basis. But from what I'm seeing going back to the year 2000, while the averages come up with the numbers that favor a neutral summer to be the hottest, there have been really hot La Nina summers and really hot El Nino summers as well. So I just don't feel like this has the same importance of signaling that we see in the winter months. And, and why not? Well, here's what I'm looking at. So I've gone back to the year 2000, and this is the data for PDX site-specific of 90-degree days, basically the hot summer from May through September. The year summer of 2000, only hit 90 degrees five times. The summer of 2001 only did it six times. And then we had a hot spike the summer of 2003. We're up here 22 days. And then if you look, we, we kind of cool back down. 2011, we only did it seven times. And then we got into the hot spike of 2015. It was 28 times or 29. And then we had a downward year. And then 2018, there's that record, the most ever, 31 days. And then that came down to only 11 in 2019. But what I want you to notice is 
2001, 2000, I'm sorry, 2021, 22, 2023, and 2024. The last four summers have all hit more than 20 90 degree days. That is an unprecedented stretch. Before that, we had not gone, if you go back to 2000, more than back to back days, of back to back summers, rather, of having hot summers where we hit 90 degrees 20 times or more. So I firmly believe this summer will be an unprecedented fifth summer in a row of hitting 90 degrees at least 20 or more times. So and you, then you have to ask yourself, well, all of a sudden, is this the new norm? Is the new norm now 20 or more 90 degree days? And unless we get into something that I don't foresee coming up, the answer is yes. This is, in fact, the new norm. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you don't know, the National Weather Service, they do a running 30-year average of temperatures. They reset the average every 10 years. So when I come out and say, well, the normal high for today's date is 66 degrees, that is what the average has been over the last 30 years. Again, the climate average was reset in the year 2000, 2010, 2020. It will be reset again in the year uh, 2030. So that long-time average was 13 days when I moved here, 1971 to 2000 climate average. The climate average from 81 to 2010 actually went down, and then it came back up 1991 to 2020. And we're like, well, okay, that doesn't really show any change, and you would be correct. But if you go, well, let's look at 2000 moving forward, because it seems like we're hot. Well, 2001 to 2020, this is only a 20-year average, so maybe it's not apples and apples, only a 20-year average, but still the average has become 16. And if you go back and just look at the last 10 years, again, not apples to apples, but the last 10 years, 2015 to the summer of 2024, the average skyrockets to 23 days for a summer average of 90 or better. And if you look at 100 degree days, which it used to be pretty common, we would not hit 100 in any given summer, but now we're averaging more than one day a summer if you go 2001 to 2020. If you look at the last 10 years, holy moly. Now we've seen a skyrocket average that says we hit 100 degrees three times every summer season. So again, I'm just building you a mound of data that says our summers are getting hotter and the new expectation is absolutely to hit 90 or better 20 plus times. Now, much like I do for the winter outlook, I still look and catalog what the upper level flow patterns are projected to be at 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. This is the American CFS model, just updated the other day. So here's June, 517 millibars. See, there's a little trough offshore. There's a high pressure ridge, a seasonal high pressure ridge starting to take hold in Texas and across the South. So if you just look at this, I will tell you this to me says, not a, not a crazy hot June, but a June that probably averages either normal to above normal, which is what the current outlook is. Now, when you get to July, now this upper level high is building northward and strengthening up through Utah and Colorado. And it's producing a ridging pattern with above normal temperatures potentially up through the Rockies and up into parts of Canada. And we jumped the, the flow pattern pressure height to 583. In August, this drops a little bit because of a trough offshore. It's unclear if this trough holds out to sea long enough that it would have no cooling impact. If it does, August could be really hot, with that upper level high still sitting over the four corners. But for right now, just looking at what I'm looking at, I would make the assumption that July will likely be the hottest summer month that we have. That was the case last year. Let me read. Well, I think I put the stats down graphically. So July of 2024 was the hottest of the summer months. Yeah. Here's what July did last year. It was the hottest July on record. Not only the hottest month of the summer season, it was the hottest July on record period out of PDX records going back to 1941. The average high July a year ago was 88 degrees. That was the average high. It was six degrees above normal. Crazy. We had 13 days that hit 90 or better. We had three that hit 100 or better. The hottest day was 104. And it's this run is what we're seeing. This is why we're flipping the page and getting into hotter summers. Because no longer is it unusual to have five, six, even seven 90 degree days in a row. That used to be really unheard of. I mean, a heat wave would be like three, four, maybe five. But now we're seeing six, seven, maybe longer of these 90 degree runs. 
So when I say July is going to be the hottest of the summer upcoming, and this summer is going to be another summer where you produce more than 29 degree days, this is the type of month we could see. I mean, August has the potential to do this too. So we'll be keeping a close eye. So with all of that said, I just close out. I hope you found the data interesting. But the data to me overwhelmingly now supports that unless you have a concrete reason to say, hold on, no, not this year. I don't have that concrete reason this summer. And without a concrete reason, then we assume it's going to be another hot summer with 22 to 31 days reaching 90 or better. And the fact that we're at least going to be up to 100 degree temperatures at some point. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. This is my summer hot weather projection for 2025. Uh, next time I talk to you, I'll be back to projecting some daily weather for you. But for now, I thank you for watching and for subscribing to my YouTube channel.